So the only difference really between section 8.2 and 8.1 is that the problems in 8.2 are going to be a little bit more difficult. We're going to be dealing with a lot of different units and a lot of different rates, but as long as you keep your page organized, you should be fine. So let's look, let's learn about the math. So Jeff lives in a town near the Canada-US border. The gas tank of his truck holds about 90 liters of fuel. He can either buy gas in his town at $1.06 per liter, Canadian, <clears throat> or travel across to the border to the United States to fill up at 286 US per gallon. So what option makes the most sense economically? Which costs less? So let's figure out the average cost to fill up in Canada. So we have the amount in Canadian dollars D is equal to 90 liters times $1.06 per liter Canadian, which works out to $95.40 Canadian. So it'll cost $95.40 Canadian to fill up in Canada. But now let's convert 90 liters into US gallons. So G gallons is 90 liters times, there's about 3.79 liters in a gallon. So 90 liters times one gallon to 3.79 liters and it works out to 23.746 gallons. So now the cost in US dollars for 23.746 gallons is how we find that. We have US cost is equal to 23.746 gallons times $2.86 US per gallon. Works out to $67.92-ish US. But now we need the cost in Canadian dollars for that. So the cost in Canadian dollars for about 23.7 US gallons, we have C is equal to $67.92-ish US times the exchange rate, let's say it's about a dollar two Canadian. So times a dollar two Canadian for one US dollar, US dollars cancel, which works out to $69.27-ish Canadian. So it'll cost $69.27 Canadian to fill up in the United States. The difference in cost between filling up in the United States and Canada. So here's our cost Canadian for filling up in Canada. Here's our cost for Canadian for filling up in the US. The difference in cost is $26. It's much more economical for Jeff to fill up in the United States. He'll save about $26. Our second example involves connecting rates to actual real-life situations. So describe a situation in which each unit rate might be used, identify and explain that could influence the unit rate, the factors that could influence the unit rate in the situation. So A, 0 0.05 milligrams per kilogram. This could be used for say a medical dosage. You're giving so many milligrams of medicine per kilograms of body weight. Uh, the second one, 98.5 cents per liter. Well, that would have been gas around five years ago, I guess. So we have 98.5 cents Canadian per liter of fuel. And factors that could influence that would be like wars or natural disasters or anything. 7.2 megabytes per second. If it was m little b PS, that would be megabits per second. It's just much less than a megabyte megabit is a much, much less than a megabyte. So we have 7.2 megabytes per second. Um, this would be like maybe a download speed or yeah, or an upload speed for getting something to or from a network, from a computer. So things that could influence this rate would be if you had lots of computers on the network maybe. But yeah, that's all that this question is asking us. Example number three, reasoning to solve a rate problem. So Paula is asked to order snacks for an office meeting for, of 180 people. She decides to order dessert squares, which come in boxes of 24. She estimates that she will need two and a half squares per person. How many boxes should she buy? So here we have two different rates. So let's just write the rates down. So we have three key pieces of information. We know that we need two and a half squares per person. We know that one box contains 24 squares, and we know that there are 180 persons in attendance. So we're going to use something called unit analysis to solve this problem. And what that is, is that that's basically making sure that your units cancel off in a way that leaves you with what you want. So we want 
boxes. How many boxes should she buy? That's what we're looking for. So let's start off with box and make sure we write one box over the number of squares as one of our things. And then we need squares to cancel off. So let's have number of squares eaten to one person as our second. And then we know that there are 180 people. So let's have number of people as our third. I find it a lot easier to use the actual numbers first, but that's just me. So number of boxes is equal to one box to 24 squares, right? One box is 24 squares. I'm trying to find boxes, so make sure that my box term is on top. So one box to 24 squares times two and a half squares per person, my squares will cancel, times 180 persons, my persons will cancel, which works out to 18.75 boxes. Now we can't buy three quarters of a box. We can't buy 0.75 of a box. So we'll round that up to 19 boxes of desserts. So Paula should buy 19 boxes of desserts. All right, so in summary, our key idea is that when you're given a rate problem that involves an unknown, you can solve the problem using a variety of strategies. Um, one problem involves writing an, equi an equation that involves a pair of equivalent ratios, but in order to be equivalent ratios, the units and the numerators of the two ratios must be the same, and the units of the denominators must be the same. So you can't compare apples to oranges and then apples to kiwis. It has to be apples to oranges is equal to apples to oranges. So paying attention to the units in each term of the ratios will help you write the equation correctly. A multiplication strategy, which is what I've been using, can be used to solve many rate problems, such as problems that require conversions between units. So including the units with each term in the product and using the unit elimination helps you verify that your product is correct, exactly like the last example. 